Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to create complex stylized scenes in Blender quickly. I'll be sharing a few different workflows that I find useful. So if you're aiming for more stylized rendering in Blender, you're in the right place. Without further ado, let's jump into Blender. In starting a new project, the first thing you want to do is search for references. This step is important and can be really helpful. You can simply search on Google, Pinterest, which has a great recommendation system, or use something like ArtStation. After search, it's important to keep all your references in one place, so we can easily refer to them through the project. For this, I recommend using something like Miro, an online service for creating virtual boards. It does have a paid option, but there are also a free plan available for you to try. In additionally, students can obtain a free educational license. That offers them more functions than the free version. If you prefer something completely free, I recommend PureRef, which is a free piece of software. It is simpler and doesn't sync across all your devices, but it's effective for creating reference boards. Links to Miro and PureRef in the description. After creating a board, remember to use it. If you have second monitor, tablet or laptop, you can use them to display your reference images, especially for technical details such as anatomy, specific architecture styles or the overall mood of the scene. Now back in Blender, the first step is to create a new camera. For composition assistance, you can enable composition guides under the camera settings. You can choose between few of them. I will start by blocking out the scene using simple cubes to establish the layout. It's essential to maintain proper scale. For instance, buildings shouldn't be only 5 cm tall, but rather more like 3 meters per story. Once I've set up the basic camera shot, I will focus on blocking out the scene with simple geometry. I will model only the elements visible from camera angles. This approach saves time by avoiding the modeling of objects that won't be seen in the final render. Now let's begin modeling the first building. For the roof, I utilize the Rootize Geometry Nodes Generator from the free Bagapai add-on. You can find the link in the description below. The Asset Browser provides a variety of useful elements such as roof tiles, hand rays, stairs, beams and more. I will simply drag and drop these elements into the scene from the Asset Browser. Adjust the rotation and size and create simple windows by editing the geometry. As you can see I'm creating super simple geometry for windows using just some cuts and extrusion. The second type of building, the skyscraper, will be quite simple as well. Start with a cube, add some divisions and extrude basic windows. You can set up two materials, one for windows and one for the rest part of the building. We will use this later when creating materials. In addition to buildings, let's add some trees. Blender comes with an add-on for this, you just need to enable it. Go to Preferences, Add-on and search for Trees, enable Add Curve Sampling Tree Gen. With this add-on enabled, simply use Shift A, Curve, Sample Tree Gen. Now you can choose from several presets and adjust various parameters to create a simple tree easily. To add leaves, switch the tab from Geometry to Leaves and enable Show Leaves option and increase the scale. Under the branch splitting, increase the levels, but be cautious, as this can be resource intensive. After creating a tree, consider using it, using the Alt D shortcut to create an instance, which is more efficient and consumes less memory than Shift D. Another asset from Bagapai that we'll use is a brick wall. Add a bevel modifier to it to add more details. I also use hand rays for the balconies and beam 006 to add an extra layer of details for the roofs of buildings. To add more details to building, I duplicate the brick wall geometry nodes tree and make slight edits. At the end, I will add a delete geometry nodes set to instance and plug to it a random value node to delete a brick randomly. This allows for creation a nice facade with ease. To add an extra layer of details to the windows, I create planes with different colors and additionally I create some planes with this material. I use noise texture with color ramp 
as alpha channel, and I place this place over the facade to introduce an extra layer of stylization. As you can see, I've created various types of buildings to introduce variation into the scene. I only use the same techniques that I showed before. To avoid creating a lot of these buildings, you can just use different rotations, scale and merge between them to create an illusion of diverse cityscape. For additional greenery, I've utilized a free Blender asset pack containing a rich assortment of plant assets such as grass, shrubs and other plants ready for use in Blender. Best of all, it's completely free. You can find the link in the description. Now let's add some lightning to the scene. I use a sun light as my primary light source. It's crucial to set its rotation early on, because the rotating it later can have a big impact on the mood of the scene. Additionally, I scatter point and area light through the scene to achieve desired lighting effect. For instance, an area light positioned here adds a nice effect on the roof tiles. To create an atmospheric effect I used large planes with appropriate materials. By using gradient texture for alpha and colors I create a smooth color transition and create a nice atmosphere effect. In gradient node I plugged texture coordinate and two mapix nodes to rotate and place the gradient correctly. I used two color lamps, one for alpha and one for color of emission. The setup generates nice color transition and creates overall nice atmosphere effect. Additionally I add simple cube-like shape with principled volume shader to add nice effect to the sky. Ok, now let's dive into creating materials. I will show you several techniques that I used on all of materials in this project. Let's start with the pot in the foreground. I used an ambient occlusion node combined with color ramp to play with contrast and use it as a base color for the principled BSDF node. Remember to activate the ambient occlusion option under EV setting to enable it use. Following the principle BSDF I added a shader to RGB node to introduce an additional layer of stylization and control. By adding diffuse BSDF and another shader to RGB node I isolate highlights created by nearby light source using a color ramp. By blending these effects using mix node I achieved a nice highlight effect on the pot. For the leaves I used similar technique. Using a diffuse shader and shaper to RGB node I used greater than node to distinguish highlights and dark areas. By blending colors I create a nice transition from blue to red to yellow. Additionally, I incorporate a leaf texture to add further detail. For windows, I create a simple emission material. I used attributes from geometry nodes along with a color ramp to select random colors per window. So, I want to create a system that automatically choose random color from color ramp to have randomization in windows. To do that I create a simple geometry node system with a store named attribute set to face with attribute named face random. I plugged in a random node and plugged the node setup input to seat to have control over random seat for each object separately. Enabling the EV setting for bloom and adjusting the threshold create a nice glare effect. For the tree leaves I use straightforward material with principled BSDF featuring the red colors and some emission to reduce shadows. Lastly, for the balcony I apply a simple brick texture as a color to add an extra layer of detail to the foreground. To enhance the sky I added simple clouds. I start by cutting the cloud shape from a plane using the knife tool and then I create a basic geometry node system to generate a cloud group. This system distributes points on a plane and creates cloud instance on them. By randomizing position scale and offsetting each cloud in the normal direction I prevent overlapping geometry. 
Thanks to that I can easily change seed values and have an infinite amount of different variations. For the background I crafted a simple mountain using ANT landscape add-on, available in the blender by default. You just need to enable it in preferences. To use it you can just use Shift A then selecting Mesh and Landscape. You have now a lot of settings and presets, for example you can manipulate them and create rivers, cliffs and mountains. It's ideal for creating background ascent and you can also use it as a base for sculpting for more detailed scenery. To stylize the foreground further you can use a grease pencil object. By adding a blank grease pencil object and entering the draw mode, you can select a stroke placement on two surfers and experiment with offset setting. This allows you to paint over geometry and add the finishing touches. Grease pencil is a really powerful tool and you can find a lot of awesome tutorials on YouTube. Ok, so this is the final result from the camera, but we can improve it through compositing. To begin I separate everything into layers, foreground, middle ground, back and the background itself. Then organize elements into collections. And to create a layer you can just press the add view layer button and choose copy setting to create a copy of the current layer. And adjust visibility accordingly. You must ensure the transparent option is enabled under film setting. This will enable us blending everything in compositing. Each view layer can have its settings customized under the view layer settings. You can see there are a lot of them. What I want is cryptomite for objects and materials. And I want it enable it for every single layer. After that setup I press simple render image and as you can see Blender renders every layer separately. Ok, so let's jump in the compositing tab and enable use notes option. Duplicate the layer notes few times and select a different layer for each of one. Using the mix note and alpha values from their layers I reconstruct the combined image. Now I can play with compositing. Adding a mix color node introduce an extra layer of atmosphere. Thanks to separation of layers I can create extra layer of atmosphere between each of them and change the color and generally play with it. I have a lot of control now. Using a cryptomat node allow us for precise object and material selection using a pick tool. This enable adjustments such as darkening the floor with a hue saturation value node like this. Another useful case is adding wave texture to selected elements. For that I can use texture node. Under the texture tab let's create a new one. I will choose the marble type and change the turbulence to zero to have straight lines. And using this with color ramp, cryptomat mask and hue saturation node in node editor. I can add this nice comics effects to selected elements. Another use case is to add chromatic aberration effect, but only for selected objects. For example, flowers. To do that I will create a custom chromatic aberration node that will look like this inside. As you can see it's pretty simple. Thanks to cryptomat and chromatic aberration now I can add this effect to only selected object. At the end I add a simple lens distortion effect and at the end to save this image just select the viewer node and under the end panel use save image option. Ok, so this is the final result. As you can see Eevee is a really powerful engine for stylized rendering. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something new in this tutorial and if you want to support the channel you can check my blender add-ons, links in the description. Thanks again for watching, see you again soon and bye!